hello beautiful people you're welcome to my channel my name is fury if this is your first time here you're welcome i want to say a very big thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel thank you you're welcome to this tutorial so today i'll be showing you how to make this beautiful fascinator right here okay and these are the items we'll be needing for this tutorial i have my strip already if you have not watched my previous video on how to achieve that over there kindly do that okay we have our alice band right here measuring tape flower uh, feathers for embellishment we have our thread scissors a crinoline a hot glue or if you have your uhu gum or UHG gum you can as well use it okay and don't forget your needle and thread okay by the time i was making this tutorial i was not having the color of thread at home so i had to use what i what was available which is uh the black thread over there but don't pay attention to that at all all right to proceed i used about one yard of crinoline for this tutorial okay just one yard that's 36 inches um uh, length and of course the width remains the same that's about six to seven inches of crinoline so what i did i just tied the edges to hold it in place with my needle and thread then i started doing running stitch okay if you watch from the beginning i started doing a running stitch from the beginning of the edge of the crinoline where i tied as you can see what i'm doing there i'm just running the stitches okay there from the beginning then I pull, then you pull, you pull, okay. If uh, you are making this, you need to make sure you pull as you stitch along, as you run your stitches, you pull. This is vital because if you want to wait till you get to the end of the crinoline and by the time you pull, the crinoline may get damaged and it may not give your work a good uh, finishing or look. So as you go, as you run your stitches, Make sure to pull so that the crinoline does not get damaged or so that it doesn't fail. Okay, I'm still going to continue my running stitch. Okay, when you do that, make sure to, to pull. So I was able to pull just a little. It's giving me the result that I need already. Okay, so my crinoline, I'm not using uh, the number, the amount I'm using is not much okay so but if you're using a large quantity you have to make sure to pull as you walk as you run the stitches all right so i've come to the end of the second edge as you can see right there so what I basically what I want to achieve is to get a base for my loop for my crinoline loops okay so if you're using enough crinoline if you're using about two years up to three years you can curve like I'm doing all right just what I did here you can you can like curve it to have steps to have uh, layers all right just layers like there I have two layers can you see it there but that's not what I want to achieve. I want to have like a kind of flat base for my crinoline loops. Okay, if you want to have bigger layers, you can use up to two to three years or more, more uh, crinoline um, or more yards. Okay, as you wish. All right. So right here, I just want to try to achieve a base, a kind of flat base. So I'm not going to be covering it to. I don't want any layers at all so what I'm doing there I'm just trying to get a flat base all right so that's basically what I want to achieve and uh, once I get to once I achieve that I had to get stitch the two edges together okay if you watch very well what I'm doing okay so the two tight edges together you sew them together so that is the flat base i want to achieve okay i think this is just possible with one yard of crinoline okay one yard is 
was perfect for me to achieve this flat base so I'm just tacking it together the two tied edges together so that it does not protrude you need to make sure you get the both of them sew them together as you're sewing along so I'm done with that and this is what I have just exactly what I wanted it's now looking like a base okay you can put any embellishment on top of this it's just perfect just perfect for what I so the next step is to form our loops like I said earlier if you are yet to watch a video on how I made this kindly watch it's on my channel I posted it a few months ago how to make a crinoline ring fascinator okay so the video is there for you so what I did was to get the measurements the sizes that I needed I cut them out and I tied the edges as usual when you're working with crinoline don't forget to tie the edges so the, the sizes that I needed for the loops I've cut them out and I've tied the edges of the cream no lane okay so we'll move over to forming the the loops so basically to form your loops it's like like you're forming it an eight shape like you're forming it okay so here is a clearer view on how to do that this is a clear view on how to do that on how to form your loops please kindly watch carefully watch how i made my loops so you call that in then take the second edge then curve it in just like you're forming it all right how do i say it now eight it's just as simple as that okay i still so then you stitch of course you must have tied the edge of your crinoline all right i've formed my loops okay if you're still not clear on this drop a comment all right on that but i'm sure the illustration was clear so i've formed the my loops the different sizes that i need the next thing to do is to tag them together there are two ways to go about this you can decide to tag directly on the base okay or you can tie them separately but i decided to tie it separately so that i don't end up having any mistake or making mistakes at the end of the day so if i should make any mistake or at all while i'm doing this i can still decide to lose it or and start all over again but if you're tacking directly on the base you have to be extremely careful so that you get a perfect job so i'm doing it separately i've tacked the other one to to the bigger one then the smaller one comes in the middle okay so the smaller one comes afterwards you can just put it in the middle there okay for yours you can decide to put it anywhere you want or you wish or you desire okay so just tack down tack 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 make sure you tack this very well all right i've always said it i don't like using gum when it comes to crinoline hmm? okay sometimes it can just resist the gum somehow <laughs> so i prefer you stitch make sure to stitch very well it makes your work last longer and perhaps you want to use gum you can still stitch afterwards so i'm done stitching friends so i have my loops the next thing to do with my thread still on please don't mind my black thread on if you're working with yours please use the matching color thread okay so the next thing to do is to attach it to the base to my base as i'm doing them so so the edge the the edge where the, the edge where the the part where the two um like the base where the two edges meet 
just there the base i'm talking about the base so you can decide to fix your loops anyhow you want it all right let's fix it so my tacking i'm going to be tacking in a circular form because i want the thread under or beneath the base to cover up if you just tack it and leave it it it's possible that the thread may be showing so what you do is you tack in a circular form in order to secure your loops down properly to the base i don't know if you understand so you tack in a circular form you tack in a circular form you tack in the middle of the loop the loops you, you you formed you tack it in a circular form and you pull your thread very well this is to make your loop or your loops rather to relax on the base very well so that your thread does not show the thread under the the base or on the base does not show if you're using a color a matching color of thread it's wonderful of course you have to use a matching color of thread don't mind don't mind my thread okay so stuck in a circular form tuck in a circular form as you do that you apply pressure so that the you pull your thread very well so that the the loop can relax very well on the base so just watch what I'm doing friends I'm trying to press it down if you check very well the thread is still showing on the so so you tack in a circular form press it down very well so that it, that can cover up so what I'm doing I'm just tacking in a circular pattern So I'm just, can you see trying to press it down there I still haven't achieved what I want so that is how I'm going to tack it so um, so there you have it friends remember don't always be in a hurry when you're working all right take your time make sure you have a neat work tack 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 so, so what i'm showing you there is that the thread is still showing so you have to do more tacking you have to do more tacking over there so i'm done tacking friends so my my loops to my base tacked it very well in a circular form to cover up so can you see how tight it's looking to the base so the next step what i'm doing there right now is to attach my alice band okay uh working with gum um no 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 i'm still going to tack my alice band to my crinoline i want to make sure that everything is intact is well is well sewn to to, to each other i don't want anything to to look like it's falling off at the end of the day so i'm attaching my alice band right now so what i did was to can you see what i'm doing there i had to hold it down to the base just by the side of the alice band okay so you decide the part the side you want it to be if you want it to go higher you can bring take it higher on the alice but if you want it to be lower it all depends on you so what i'm doing i'm tacking now I'm going to be tacking friends did you notice something else <laughs> okay the color of my thread has changed again <laughs> all right don't mind me my black thread got exhausted and of course i had to continue so i'm using a different thread 
remember when you're doing yours make sure your thread is ready so you don't be like me who is using different color thread so i'm done attaching my alice band and the next thing to do is to embellish my work okay so this is the final stage friends mm -hmm. i hope you've enjoyed the tutorial so far if you have please give it a thumbs up like share comment okay and if you have not subscribed what are you still waiting for please do so please subscribe to this channel and um, you'll be getting good videos all right so i've attached my flower you can decide to use any embellishment you want at all you can decide to add bigger feathers star feathers chicken feathers um, and, so, and lots more you can decide to just make something different from this you can decide to add beautiful flowers use any kind of embellishment you want so i'm just putting my my feathers right under the flower I had to open up a little space there okay before you do this you can decide to still attach your feathers to your flowers so that you, before you you attach the flower you can come the feathers directly on behind the flowers if you don't want to go through all this long process of having to attach the feathers afterwards okay so there you have it friends we are almost done all right finally we have to cover up our the rough part just under if you have a felt material i had to cut out a little scuba fabric to cover up that part if you have a, a felt material you can use it so that's the part you're going to cover up majorly you can use it the rough part under there okay so that is why you have to even tack your alice band so that it can be relaxed so at the end of the day you don't have uh, much uh, thread showing or protruding so we're done guys we're done friends this is what we have thank you so much for watching